Hello and welcome to Food with Life. I am your host, Japati. We're at the Conscious Life Expo 2016 in beautiful Los Angeles with a very, very, very nice gentleman here. Uh, he's a, what do we might call a universal sound healer and more. So I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our guest. Hi there. Stuart Pierce. Pleasure to have you. Thank you. So I was reading some things about your anecdote, and I know you, I'm sure in more ways than one, deal with sound and its attunement to people's soul, physiology, being, what have you. Maybe share with us a beginning and I might inquire. Well, we know that sound is at the core of creation. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is I help people feel where their own unique sound of creation lies within their bodies because our voices are purely physical means that we use to communicate the way we think and the way we feel. So what I do is I tune people into the most authentic sound in their being. Mm. And this can be done through sustained breath, through sustained chant, rather like mantra mm -hmm. or bhajan, or it can actually be done through pure open vowel tone. And when this sound is emitted from our bodies, we feel a level of authenticity, which is very rare mm -hmm. in our experience because of all sorts of conditioning and education and inhibiting principles that move us away from our note. Mm. And we become inauthentic. I mean, for example, the sound of the Western world is this sound. Mm -hmm. So it's the sound of the head. It's the sound of cerebralization. I mean, this is what most people come to me using. Mm -hmm. And they say, you know, what I, I feel a bit stressed, you know. I mean, it can be a little bit nasal, maybe, yeah, yeah, on yeah. this continent. Yeah. You know, I feel a little bit stressed out, and I mm -hmm. don't really know what I'm doing. And I say, well, you know, would, 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 you, would you like to find another point of reference in your body <laughs> that allows you to feel more relaxed, right, right. allows you to feel more calm, allows you to feel perhaps more gracious or mm -hmm. more grace-filled? Mm -hmm. And that when we sound this, if words arise from the heart, which is what our, our, where our note is positioned, then if words arise from the heart, they enter the heart. If words arise from the tongue alone, they don't pass beyond the ears. Mm. So, for example, though, you know, people, their emotions, uh, as I say, the emotions basically govern everything. I mean, there's, there's the feeling level. Of course, there's absolute being, but I consider the manifestation, the uh, first manifestation is touching upon feelings that we have, or whatever they might be caused by, or whatever will soon come. So these feelings um, can go either way, you know, whether it be uplifting or downtrodden or what have you. So uh, do you pick a sound for somebody or do you choose a sound? Or does someone come to you and say, look, I'm, I'm going through all this stuff, I'm feeling, you know, or I feel just wonderful, you know. How does well, to be honest, most of the people that come to me need profound healing, so they come for that specific reason, because mm -hmm. they're out of sorts, they're out of kilter, they're out of harmony. They're feeling disharmony, disenchantment, and disenfranchisement in their, in their lives, mm -hmm. so they come for healing. And so what I do is I automatically, sympathetically as an empath, open up a conversation with that individual to find out, well, where are the disempowerments? Where are the holding points? And the stories begin. And so they describe to me where their feeling states are most negative. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot, a lot of the people come um, knowing full well where joy lies. Yeah, but yeah. what they find is this huge predicament of not being able to feel it in their lives because of the heaviness mm -hmm. of what is taking place, which, of course, as we know, uh, feeling is the language of the soul, so there's a heaviness within our beings. Mm -hmm. But what that begins to do, as you were intimating by what your introduction was all about, it begins to affect the density of our bodies. Yes. So our, our, our organic fiber starts to reflect that. 
You know, for example, if we're producing a tremendous amount of cortisol and noradrenaline, the stress hormones, then the liver, the kidney, and the gallbladder become immensely impacted with density. And that brings about distemper. It brings mm -hmm. about depression. It brings about anger. It anger. brings about a passive release of anger, which mm -hmm. is inflicted depression. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I know I have uh, myself an, uh, a frequent uh, anger. You know, and I knew You're an angry man, are you? Well, I'm not an angry man, but anger is deeply <laughs> lodged within Why me. Why is that? I want to talk about this in a minute after our break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give me a breath of relief. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because the, it seems that there's a major paradigm within Western society mm -hmm. of people being very angry because we know that cirrhosis of the liver is on an increase. And the liver is the, is the mechanism, the organic mechanism, that purifies right, the right, blood right. and therefore purifies the ire out of our system. Uh -huh. But of course, as we know, you know, most people who are very, very angry turn to, uh, to, uh, turn to drink and they Oof. become alcoholics. I so want to talk more on this. The fire water gets to them. <laughs> the heat. <laughs> so we'll talk more about this and I'll tell so you. So the, the issue is that we don't express our anger. Uh, so maybe that's what it's all about. That, no, you know, no. You're I'm a good boy who doesn't express I learned how to anger. do it and I'll share that Whoa, with you. Wow, I just got that. Yeah, I can see. <laughs> okay. A direct force. That was, a, that was an interesting finger that really got me. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with us. This is Food with Light. My name is Chupati with our wonderful guest, Stuart Pierce. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Food with Life. We're with our wonderful guest, Stuart Pierce, here at the Conscious Life Expo. And uh, you know, we were talking about anger. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare say that, young. No. Much of anger, <coughs> I know much of Willard's anger I have, is, has been s given to me. I would almost say it's hereditary. Hereditary, you know. It's been, I was perhaps born with it. Perhaps it was hidden when I was younger. And then certain incidences would suddenly uh, be uncovered and, <laughs> you know, it would be blow up, you know. Then I say, w but it's only been since the last 20, 25 years that I started to say, realize what was happening, you know, from different trainings I've had. So share with me the, ba the fact of your emotions and where they might be rooted or where they could come from. Could it not be? being hereditary? Nature or nurture? Hmm. Interesting question. I believe that our emotions are much older than our mental body. Mm -hmm. so they're deeply, deeply atavistic, so mm -hmm. to do with original purpose. They're deeply instinctual. So when you, that you <coughs> mean beyond this lifetime? Of course, yes. Okay. But I mean going, you know, in terms of our humanity, mm -hmm. going way the back, way back in the sands of time, going back before we actually had you know, I'm going back into Cro-Magnum and going into Neanderthal man. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I wrote a book called The Heart's Note mm -hmm. um, because our, our, the note or the song of our soul is always positioned in our heart. Right. You know, it is the seat of the soul. And why I've been wandering around this planet now for 65 years looking for people with their hearts open because of the kindness and the love and the empathy and the sympathy in their eyes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, you know, I've, I've often been dismayed by the fact that I haven't found it. Mm. So of course I've taken full responsibility for that that you see without is a mirror image of what's going on within, the co-creativity mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. And so I try and spread love wherever I go. I'm very firm and non-sentimental about it. Mm. But I try and spread love. Anyway, so you know, it feels to me that our emotions are really, 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 really ancient. Mm. And that thinking is a relatively new activity for us. The interesting thing in our society in the West is that we are unfamiliar with the expression of very strong or dark emotions. As children, we're told to put them away. Mm. And that hence, we become frustrated or mm. bottled up or yeah. angry. And then we project them onto other people. They, as you were saying, they suddenly we reach a point of fever pitch. And then mm. suddenly the energy <laughs> goes, wow. Right. And the other person is saying, why are you getting so angry with me? Right, All right. I was asking is if you'd like a hot dog right. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Where did that come from? So yeah, yeah. we're very, very angry. And yeah. therefore, we actually don't see the purpose of our anger. You know, that our anger in warrior spirit, in yang form, can be used to say, that is completely inappropriate. True. But many of us, for example, my wife, uh, she's quite the opposite. She's very heart-centered. She's done a certain practice, <coughs> which has uh, developed that, and she's, 
I've hardly ever seen her get angry. Maybe at me, if I get angry, you know, she'll come back. But uh, I've never seen her really just erupt at anybody. Well, know. because she's healthy. I feel yeah. it as you speak it. Intuitively, I know because I feel people as a behaviorist, mm -hmm. you know, as mm -hmm. a sentient being, as a psychic, as a seer, mm -hmm. you know, I feel it. She's not. It's not one of her issues. It's mm -hmm. just one of your issues. Right, right, right. So, you know, what a vibrational match because she can show you what patience and temperance mm -hmm. and unconditional love, because right. she's so loving. She will let you go on and on and on and on until you finally need to be told enough. Or what she does, actually, she leaves the room. She doesn't want to be anywhere so she's around she's silent. It. Well, because her heart is so tender. How yeah. beautiful. She just gets out. This is not appropriate. I'm leaving. Right, right. Goodbye. But she doesn't make a song or a dance about it. She just gets up graciously and leaves. Right, and then that sometimes gives me a little bit... A little bit more well, angry. Of course, you know, well, there could be an element of denial. Of well, course. it gets me perhaps a little angry, or but then I step back, you know, and I say, "Wait, there's something going on here which I oh, need well to done. look at." Hmm? Well done. Right, right. Detach, feel stillness, observe. What, what's happening within me? Right. Detach, feel stillness, observe. What's right. happening within me? As opposed to, <laughs> right, which is right. what most of us do. Right, right. It's called reaction. So all we do is react something we've always acted before. What I'm teaching is that we need to cease reaction and really work on response, mm -hmm. which is a completely fresh decision that we've never made before, ever. But of course, it's not intemperate. It's full of tolerance. It's full of patience. It's full of compassion. It's full of unconditional love. That's my body. Trying to practice it. Love. And so when I say no to somebody, right. I say it with absolute grace. Somebody got at really angry with me just now, actually, downstairs. Yeah. It's quite interesting, because <laughs> I just kept on saying no, no. I look, I'm listening to you, but there's no space in this conversation for me. Right. All you're doing is talking at me. Right. And I need you to know that I really honor you, but I'm not here to listen to this, because right. there are five other people standing behind you, right. patiently waiting, and they want to share their souls with me. Mm. And you're not doing that. How dare you, you rude man! <laughs> except you and I said I, well forgive me I give you blessings and I give you lots of grace goodbye my son we're going to take more on that I have some further questions but I thank you I am your host Chapati with our wonderful guest Stuart Pierce stay with us we'll be right back Welcome back to Food with Life with our very special guest, Stuart Pierce. And we're talking a bit about emotions, and I have a question for you. <laughs> easy, easy. Oh, dear. Don't jump back, please. <laughs> the most significant and important emotion I see on the planet is that four-letter word, love. Now, I know what you were thinking. No, 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 no. Um, well, of course, there are many four-letter words, but yes, many but of them are expletive. Uh, uh, love absolutely. For love, L love is all there is. L-O-V-E. Love, our very existence. Beautiful. You know, so that to me is really the most important, and most of the other stuff is just trickling, you know, around. And if we learn to practice love, preach love, and breathe love, the world is at our beckon, you know, so mm. to speak, you know. So to share with your must some of your ideas about how we can perpetuate or generate love if you have some techniques or some ways to develop that in the heart so that's really what begins to predominate mm. that's an interesting question because it isn't is it not that is it not that the emotion which really is the most significant of all the emotions the one that can make love it, yeah love is all there is okay Love That's all is there, all there is. is. I don't actually think it's an emotion. I feel it's an immensely high vibrational feeling state. Mm -hmm. um, but when we see it in the divine female, you know, in the di divine feminine, who is ever loving, when we see it in Isis' face or Kuan Yin or in Lakshmi's face, in, in Mary's face, it's just extraordinary. It moves us into a very, very high vibration. Mm -hmm. So love is all there is. Um, however, that recapitulates what you were saying and emphasizes the state of love. But you asked me another question at the beginning. Can you remind me? About the emotions, about how we could culture love, mm, mm, develop mm. that. Well, it's, you know, there, there's some fascinating information around today about the heart. Mm. For example, <coughs> two 
aspiring aspects that I think are quite ravishing is that the heart has an energy field 5,000 times greater than the human brain. Mm. And that the heart has its own autorhythm, which begins before the brain is activated in the unborn fetus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Isn't that extraordinary? Mm. Yes. And so um, I become se severely involved in a movement about heart coherence, mm -hmm. which I I in this great on this great landmass is known as heart math. And the way to culture the substance of the heart, which really arose out of the fact that we know that acute cardiology was an increase of 65% every year. So people were going to their cardiologists or to the consultant, to their doctors, and being given these pills, which of course wasn't curing the angina or you know, what, the fibrillation or whatever was taking place. And so <clears throat> what we all came up with were, were some heart cut-through techniques, mm -hmm. which sounds a little bit severe. However, what we noticed is that when we're using heart tingles, meaning when we're exploring joy or delight or freedom or feelings of infinite possibility and alignment with the purpose of our lives, when we're feeling expanded in the sense of producing you know, altered states of consciousness that are really amazing, mm -hmm. moving towards samadhi and nirvana, mm -hmm. that the heart muscle gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and suffused with love. But when we're experiencing the opposite, which we call heart stabs, yes. when we're experiencing anger, intemperance, impatience, anxiety, worry, depression, Darkness. all those rough-edged yeah. feelings, the heart gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. And you know, in China, there's an amazing tradition, which is that when, we're, when a person comes of age, mm -hmm. a cast of their right fist is taken, because the belief is that this is the size of your heart. Ah. So a cast of the right fist is taken, isn't that extraordinary? That's my heart. Ah. This, m this extraordinary organ that has pumped life through my body for 65 years. Right. And it just, I think that's extraordinary. Anyway, the cast is taken and turned into the Laughing Buddha. Ah. So that you always have the Laughing Buddha, which is a cast of your heart, sitting on your desk, sitting in your study, yes. wherever it may be, in the bathroom, reminding you of who you truly are, rather than what you've become. So truly, I would say the heart, <coughs> as we get older, can go expand. It well, unfortunately, it doesn't really, but it might. You know, but, uh, with way. most people, unfortunately, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller because of the negativity. It's That's the point of what I've just said. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. and hence angina comes in. I think the the um, percentage is seventy five percent in post sixty seven year olds. Seventy five percent of people mm -hmm. experience heart disease. So the, evidently the heart is getting smaller and smaller. Right. Now, as we both know, one of the ways of all, you know physiological way of being able to open up and gorge the muscle of the heart mm -hmm. with oxygenated blood is by constant meditation and using pranayama breathing. Right, right. Most people don't breathe. Right. Yes, I, I will talk about that. A technique I've been involved with for maybe more than 40 years. Breathing, pranayam, different types of breath. Yeah. So we'll it's the key in the door to the whole experience. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll get on that in a minute. I am your host, Chapati, with our special guest, Stuart Pierce. Please stay with us. This is Tools with Life. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Food with Life. I'm Yosh Chapati with our special guest, Stuart Pierce. And we're a bit talking about uh, the most extraordinary aspect, I think, of our life, and that is our heart. Our heart. Our heart. Mm. Your heart or the heart. Could it not be... My heart, your heart, our heart. Could it not be one heart, you know? Well, <coughs> I believe that, you know, in my body I, I have um, my own heart. But at the same time, what we're talking about is the metaphysical aspect of when our hearts expand, we actually feel a deep knowing. You're over there and I'm over here and there's separation between us. But somehow, when we're feeling that empathy, we join on a level of profound synergy. Right. And that's because the heart has an energy field 5,000 times greater than the human brain. So what I'm, do what I'm doing through sound is bringing people to their note, which of course comes out of here, mm -hmm. so that our hearts resonate together, mm -hmm. and therefore we feel not just individual but collective synergy, mm -hmm. and as a result of that we change the world. Mm -hmm. It only mm -hmm. takes 11% of the population to change mass consciousness. Right, right. Yes, just a small wee bit percentage. Yes, in our years back I used to teach meditation, you know, and we just had a certain percentage, small percentage of people doing the meditation, 
the entire environment would change, mm -hmm. would flip mm -hmm. from positive tendencies, mm -hmm. from negative tendencies, flip over to Wonderful. positive tendencies. Absolutely. And they were documented, you know. But it was mm. difficult for everybody <coughs> in the world and all the political things to say, ah, there's something working mm. here, you know, because they would get occluded by all their stuff, you mm. know, anger, mm. vehemence, what have it, that they mm. live by to push under this wonderful techniques. Mm. And I'm sure you're going something very similar. You know, yes, I mean, you know, I, I teach, I've been teaching meditation like you for 40 years. So what I find fascinating, because I've medi been meditating for 40 years, um, is that most people find it really difficult because we're fixated with doing, 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 doing. So what I've done is to create a very gentle and benign trick, which is that in order to meditate, we know that we move into the being, being of our still nature. Mm -hmm. But most people find that very difficult because they're charged with the yang force of doing. So what I do is to bring them into being through sounding. Mm. Because when we chant, we can't think, we just chant. Right. And then, of course, when we chant it and the flow of the breath is really extended through the chant, we move into alpha. So after the chant, there is this profound stillness that people feel literally ravished by. Right. And that's when they say, hey, this is much easier than I thought it was going to be. Mm. Because people are always putting off meditating right. because it means being still. Right. Right. I go to Egypt twice a year taking people on retreat. And, you know, these people teach me so much, meaning the people of Egypt, because they're a developing nation, and many of them, um, vast population, the largest country within Arabia, they spend a tremendous amount of time just being. Mm. And they have a quality of stillness which is just amazing. Mm -hmm. So when they look at you, you feel totally naked in their eyes. Right. Not invaded, you just feel absolutely present with them. And the first instinct that they show us is, where are you from? Right, right. The right. curiosity right. is just extraordinary. And it emphasizes out. But it rises out of stillness. Right, but that the stillness of them there focuses on you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it brings us into absolute presence. Right, because many people, their focus is on me. Understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Rather than on yeah. you. Yes, the, 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 the flow of reciprocity just isn't there. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm much more into this you-ness, so to speak, mm. rather than the minus. Mm. Um, and I think that's more so a, a manifestation of the heart, mm. as I see mm. it, you know. Absolutely. As the heart wants to expand, it more wants to share with uh, and inqui inquire about mm. other people, mm. you know. That's one thing I see a lot of in the Western world, and could be in the East, but more in the West, you know. There's a lot of this minus concepts mm. and ideas rather than the, mm. quote, the unus. Yeah, in, 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 in developing our personal sovereignty away from patriarchy, mm -hmm. we've become immensely narcissistic. Mm. And now there's a whole movement, awareness of this. So that instead of me, we're, you know, navel-gazing, which we've been doing after our LSD trips mm -hmm. 40 mm -hmm. years ago, we're now beginning to see we is the most important thing. So right. we're becoming charitable and gracious about the things that we do. You know, I bought myself, I bought, paid for myself to be here right. because I feel it's very important to give generously and as graciously as possible, which doesn't mean say I'm a walkover. I just <laughs> love the work and it brings right. people. Right, it's lovely here because <coughs> the people, there's is, is an immense sharing, mm. you know. Mm. As I say, sharing and mm. caring and mm. being and... But you know, I will comment on this, and this is by no means a criticism, it's merely a social observation. Mm -hmm. But the majority of people that I've met, not the punters, but my colleagues, yeah. do not see me. They mm. are so non-present, they're buzzing with their own energy. Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing is introducing little injections, injections of stillness, mm -hmm. just by remaining very calm in their presence. Mm -hmm. And then they suddenly stop and do a double take and say, wow, you have such kind eyes. Right. Got you. Right. Can you share with us a quick breathing or some type of technique that would allow our audience? I'd love to, but it's going to take some time. Okay. And unfortunately, I need to go to another meeting. Then you'll have to come back. Thank you very another much. Time. I would love to. Our pleasure having you, Stuart Pierce. Namaste. Namaste. And a pleasure having you, our audience. We hope to see you very much soon on Food with Life. Say goodbye to our generous Stuart Pierce, and we'll see you soon. Eat well, be well, be happy, smile, and love. Thank peace, you for peace watching. Peace and love to everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>